Now we'll take up some real good examples and along with the options to check exactly how to apply these various formulae. So you have a function y is equal to root x plus 1. So this basically means root x plus 1. The, the whole thing is square root. So which also means this is the same as telling y is equal to x plus 1 raised to half. So candidates shouldn't be under the impression that the n always has to be a whole number. It can be a fraction. It can be a negative number too. So we are using the rule dy by dx. Which rule is that? Yes, we are going to use nx raised to n minus 1. Hence, this would be n, that is half x is x plus 1 itself raised to half minus 1. So, this is going to be half into x plus 1 raised to minus half, which is nothing but x plus 1 square root of x plus 1 in the denominator. So, it's 1 upon 2 root x plus 1. Hence, we find this. Now, later on, this should become a standard kind of an understanding that a root of derivative of root x plus 1 is going to be. Actually, furthermore, you also need to take out the function within this and find into d by dx of x plus 1. But this eventually is going to be x raised to 1 minus 1, which is going to be just 1 itself. So, it's going to be 1 upon 2 root x plus 1. Hence, we get it that way. Hence, so among these, this one seems to be our option right. So this is how we find this. So just for ease sake, you can convert this as x plus 1 raised to half. So let's check our answer. Yes, it is that. Then, okay. Now this one seems to be a simple one. We have fx is equal to x raised to k. So you have y is equal to x raised to k. I repeat, f of x and y are one and the same. So you want to find f dash 1, which is the same as telling dy by dx when x is equal to 1. The same as f dash 1. Okay. So we find dy by dx. Now here you have x raised to k. Again, we need to relive. It is x raised to a constant. It's not x raised to y. So we are using the formula. So this is equivalent to n. So this is nothing but kx raised to k minus 1. So in short, f dash x or dy by dx is kx raised to k minus 1. Now it is told that f dash 1 is n. So this means that f dash 1 is nothing but k into 1 raised to k minus 1 is 10. Now 1 raised to k minus 1 will be 1. So obviously k's value is going to be 10. The value of k is 10. 10, so among these, our option is 10. Okay. Yes, we do have it as 10. Let's see what the next interesting sum has for us. Okay. Now, here we are going to use a simple rule. We'll be coming across these examples, which deliberately introduced a few rules, which you will be actually using later on more intensely. Now, here, if you see, this is a kind of what is called as an implicit function. It's not told y is equal to 1 by x and hence done it. We can do it that way. Now, let us see. If you see xy is equal to 1, we can write it as y is equal to 1 by x. Right? So, we keep this aside. y is equal to 1 by x. Okay? So, now, this was actually what is called as an implicit function. Wherein x and y are together. Now, you convert it to an explicit function. Wherein y is explicitly expressed in terms of x. So, this is the same as telling y is equal to x raised to minus 1. So, dy by dx hence would be x raised to n minus n into x raised to minus 1 minus 1 which will turn out to be minus 1 upon x square. So, dy by dx is minus 1 upon x square. Now, they have asked hence therefore y square plus dy by dx would be nothing but instead of y square, we can put 1 upon x the whole square minus plus dy by dx is minus 1 by x square. So, obviously, it will be 1 by x square minus 1 by x square, which is nothing but 0. 
So among these options, yes, obviously zero is the right option. So here we have learned one more thing when needed. If it's an implicit function where it is not clearly indicated which variable is a function, remember when y is a variable, we can convert it to an explicit function. So y is equal to 1 by x. This can be done whenever the powers of x and y are generally 1. It becomes easier this way. Okay, so let's check our answer. It is 0. Right. Okay. So here you have y is equal to 1 upon root x. To make things simpler, we can write it as y is equal to root x raised to minus 1 or we can write it as x raised to minus half. Right. So in that case, n is going to be minus half. So it's x raised to n that is x raised to minus half. So dy by dx is going to be nx that is minus half x raised to minus half minus 1 which is going to be and of course we need to further factorize and also d into d by dx of x which is going to be 1 in any case. Now this is going to be minus half into x raised to minus 3 by 2, 3 by 2. We can even write this as minus half x raised to minus 3 by 2 is x raised to minus 1 into x raised to minus 3 by 2 that is x into x raised to half that is root x. So minus 1 upon 2x root x. So it's going to be minus 1 upon 2x root x. So among these options, this is the correct option. So it's going to be my dy by dx is minus 1 upon 2x root x because x raised to minus 3 by 2 can be written as just whatever that I think we can write as x raised to minus 1 into x raised to minus half, which is going to be minus half x raised to 1 into x raised to half, that is x raised to 6. Okay, right, all right, yes, we do have it right here.